Now that we've done the data vault accelerator and uh, built our data vault out, as you can see here, we have all of our uh, links and all of our point in time uh, bridge tables here and all of our point satellite tables here. We want to go ahead and start building some you know, point in time tables and bridge tables to help us with the performance constructs to build out our data mart. So let me show you how easy it is to do that in Bubble Flex. So again, I'll head over to the projects and I'll head over to my data vault projects. And effectively, all of these actions are done on the hubs. So I'll start with a very basic one, a simple one. The first one, actually, I'll, the first one here is the customer. It's probably the, going to be the more complex one. And I'll do a, a point in timetable here. And when you do a point in timetable, you have the option here to choose the satellites that you want. So in this case here, I'm going to just go, I'm going to leave this one out and I'm going to grab those three. So I'm going to create a point in timetable across three satellites and not all the satellites here. Actual fact is I'm going to um, leave out the passwords. Okay, so let's just say I want only those two there. You can give the point in time table a name. It defaults to the same name as the hub, but you're replacing the hub underscore with a pit underscore. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. So that is now going to create the metadata structures for me to create a point in time table. What it's done, it's going ahead and created a, um, a custom attributes. We handle that through custom attributes here, but you don't have to worry about it. You can just um, integrate interact with it over here. Um, so I'll go back to columns. So I'm going to do the same on the hub address. I'm just going to create point in time table, select the satellite. If you don't select the satellite, the default is it'll take the hub and all the satellites attached to the hub. You have to be careful there though, because if you add more and more satellites to the hub, it'll just start bringing those in also. So I'm going to go, okay. Um, the customer address, I'm going to leave alone. Not going to worry about that for now. Actually, yeah, let's just do that. I'm just going to add it in on all of these. Um, just show you that uh, we may or may not use um, them all right so i've gone ahead and created a point in time table across all of these just to be um, you know to speed things up I've, I've, i have a point in time table on every single one of these if you look at that um with with all of the satellites the only one that's different is the customer i've only got um, the two satellites on there, but the rest of it only has one satellite. So we've got all the point in time tables that we want. And now it's um, time to go and have a look at breach tables here. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. Now, when you create breach tables, it's, it's very important to understand the context of um, grain. So, you know, the breach table is the grain of the label. So if you have a sales order line, if we create a breach table on sales order here, we don't, we really don't, do not want to include the sales order line stuff here so we want to grab this guy here this link over here the sales order and um, its hubs because we're going to create another breach between sales order line going back to sales order. So do not include the sales order line because that'll change the grain of this of the sales order so i'm going to call breach sales order here and then i'm going to go ahead and create the sales order line and create a breach there again okay so we will use these two breaches to connect to each other at the moment, Bumbleflex only supports um, a primary hub and its links connected to it and then, you know, going to those those hubs there. Um, and then I'm going to create one more breach here on the product. And uh, in here, I'm actually going to go and grab those two again because of the grain here. Now, easy way to, if you're doing Bumbleflex, uh, easy way to know is normally the hub if you've created, if you're not renamed the links or create unit of works, it's normally the first part of the link gives you an idea of the grain. So you can see here I'm shifting across, so I'm not going to include that into the into this. So I'm just going to create a bridge over those. So what we've done there is we've created a point in time tables across all of our hubs, and we've added bridge tables of the sales order, sales order line, and product. So now that we've added all those point in time tables, it's time to go and build them out. So let me go ho over here again to Bumble Studio, open my project up, and hit the refresh metadata. And as the metadata comes in, as you'll see here, you'll see these bridges coming in. So I've got those three bridge tables as I've, as I've discussed. And I have all my point in time tables, noting that on the customer, I'll only have these two um, customers here, right? So now that I have that, I can go ahead and, and build this out again. So Again, I'm going to do this manually. First thing here is I'm going to do the create table script again to get all the tables. So effectively follow the same process here on, um, of creating the tables first and then doing the scripts. Um, 
so as you know already what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then do all the scripts so i'm not going to go and record this again so what we're going to do um, as i said is i'm not going to show you all of this but we're going to go and grab the default insert script the sort procedure script there but lastly what we're really interested in at the moment is this business vaults procedure script here and this script will have all of the data of all of the code needed to create those point in time and bridge tables um, or actually not uh, the code that actually is going to execute that so again we go ahead here and we run that in and what you'll see in your project here is if we just go and have a look at the bfx rtv database here we'll see all of the tables there that we can now use to start modeling our data mart and in the um, stored procedures here we will have all of the code the stored procedures that's going to be used to load both our data vault and then our bridge tables and then our point in time tables